and this is how you tell the difference between different types of conifers. Um, we're going to focus in on the leaves. There's other differences too, um, but essentially what you want to do is shake hands with it. So you shake hands with your hemlock um, here. This is an eastern hemlock, Suga canadensis, and what happens is it's very, very flexible. Um, it's not spiny. Um, the stems aren't rigid. Um, they're going to bend a lot. Um, additionally, it has a very sort of dainty look to it. The hemlock does, no matter how old or, or huge the tree is. Um, very just sort of flexible and it'll give. Um, and if you look closely at the branches, especially the ones, the, the new, the young growth here, these most soft uh, branches at the very tips, um, they have these leaves that stick up in the middle of the stem, kind of like little ski jumps, um, in addition to ones that lie along either side of the stem. Um, if you look very, very closely at the leaves, I don't know if we'll be able to get in close enough here, but each one of the leaves actually has its own little stem, and the way that stem connects to the branch is a little wooden peg, and that actually ripped off there. You can see there's a little wooden peg here that connects the stem of the leaf, um, which is called the rachis, um, to the branch itself. Um, and, and additionally, if you look on the underside, oops, of a hemlock, there we go, um, it has these two parallel lines. Um, some other, some spruces have, uh, lines underneath too, um, but these kind of parallel racing stripes, um, are very indicative of a hemlock. And also the leaves, um, really taper, um, to the point rather than being more blocky like some of our other ones do. Here we have a spruce. Remember, we want to shake hands with it, so... If you shake hands with it and it's a spruce, spruce is spiky. Um, if we look really closely at the leaves, you'll see that uh, they are attached to the stem on a little wooden peg. Uh, so there isn't like a peg and then a stem like with the hemlock, but here with our spruces we just have um, that wooden peg there. Also the leaves are very rounded. You can roll them in your fingers. Um, they're not squared at all at the tip. They're very sharp, uh, which is why their spruces are spiky. Um, whereas our firs will be squared away, our firs will also have flat leaves, and our firs will attach directly to the stem on kind of a suction cup looking leaf. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be able to find any firs. That's why I'm uh, explaining that instead of showing it. But, so this is spruce. Uh, we really only have two species of spruces you're likely to find here in the Chesapeake Bay watershed. This is Norway spruce, which is from... Uh, Europe, obviously, uh, not native to here, but it's very widely planted. Um, sometimes it can invade, so really I don't recommend planting it if you can have any other uh, coniferous species in there instead that you're going to be planting, which there's plenty of options out there. Uh, but there's also red spruce, which is native to the high elevation uh, parts of the watershed, mostly in, in the West Virginia highlands and uh, northern tier of Pennsylvania, southern tier of New York. You'll see a little bit of red spruce too. Also, spruce branches tend to do this form where they, they curve down and then swoop up a little bit. So if you see it from a distance and it's doing that uh, very sort of iconic look with a, a sort of very cone-shaped structure with those swooping branches, then you likely are looking at a spruce. Uh, here we have a pine. If you can see the leaves, the needles are attached in bundles um, and they all have a woody sheath at the base of them that attaches them to the tree. So that, this bundle of needles is called a fascicle. This in particular is an eastern white pine, um, which has bundles of five typically. Um, but pines are pretty easy to spot. I mean, these needles are not found um, in any other genus. Um, so if it has needles like this, these sort of loose arrangements um, where needles are bundled together, uh, you have a pine. Some have a lot shorter uh, leaves, something like a short leaf or even a pitch pine or Virginia pine have very short needles. Um, some have very long leaves, like long leaf pine, uh, or even loblolly has pretty long needles as well. Um, but pretty hard to mistake once you know what you're looking at. Those The, the needles are um, very sort of dispersed on the tree. So you can tell from a distance that you do, in fact, have a pine and not something like a, a fir or a spruce that is more sort of taking packed in to get there. And here we have a juniper. Um, juniper species are very common in the United States, but this is the only one in the east. Um, they're a really, really important part of uh, western ecosystems, um, but these are a pretty important part of our eastern ecosystems. This is actually the most widespread conifer um, east of the Mississippi. Um, and so uh, it is has these leaves that 
are in little scales, um, or awls is another th way people describe them, um, very, very tight onto the, onto the stem. Um, but uh, unlike some of our other conifers that have uh, those scale-like leaves, um, these ones are kind of in splays that sort of just arrange out all over the place. They're not held flat at all. See so, yeah, how some come off either side, some come off the sides, um, some come off sort of vertically. Um, they're kind of all over the place. Um, so I know that sounds kind of crazy, but once you look at uh, the other things, like an arborvitae, a thuja, they have very, very flat leaves, um, or our Atlantic white cedar also has very flat leaves, whereas these are not really held flat, like most of them are, see here, flat, but there's a bunch that are coming down here and up, um, kind of all over the place, but um, this is juniper, this is eastern red cedar, juniperus virginiana, really good tree, uh, that juniper, or uh, cedar smell comes from this wood, um, really lovely, lovely scent. That's our juniper. Uh, they typically